Hey Ken folk. So this week's video I'm going to talk about what I think are really highly recommended items that you should bring to your first LARP. Now for experienced LARPers you might actually take a few from this, uh, this list and add it to your own list of what you probably should bring to a LARP. Um, I've learned this over the period of 27 years of what's helpful, what's not helpful. And um, you're gonna get some advice out there and it might be good, it may be bad, but you gotta try it out. But this is my list and it's not complete and I might even revise it for next year, you know, for next spring when the LARP season starts back up. And LARP is a full-time, full-year kind of deal where you'll have LARPs in the middle of winter. So some of this is geared towards summer and some of this is geared towards winter. So keep that in mind. So first thing on the list, toilet paper. Toilet paper is essential for um, a, an item. Now, a lot of sites will provide toilet paper, but sometimes they run out and it's really nice to have your own. Bring it in there with you. Make sure that you have your own toilet paper. Some people even use baby wipes and they swear by them. I'm a toilet paper kind of guy. Make up your own mind. Um, next thing on the list is water. Some sites don't have um, potable water. So sometimes you have to pack it in. Other times it's just not very good water and bring in your own water is a very good idea. Um, just yeah some people just put in a bunch of little bottles like those big cases. I don't like that because it just creates a bunch of waste and you'll see guys just walking around with bottles of water and it just ruins the immersion for everybody. Gallon jugs, keep in your tent, fill up your cup, and then you know you can come back outside out of your tent and uh, you can definitely easily recycle these versus those P, uh, pet plastic um, little individual servings of plastic those can't be recycled as easily so that segues into cups highly 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 recommend a cup uh, bring a cup to your first LARP now you might not need a full um, a full uh, feast gear thing but a cup is essential because you're going to be going from camp to camp at night and they're going to be offering drinks and you might not know if the cup they're giving to you is actually clean. You know if your cup is clean. And I got these cups here. Uh, this one has a glass bottom and I got this one for $1.99 and this one for $0.99. Cents. And uh, they're both great and they're really inexpensive. I would highly recommend getting a metal one. The clay ones or the ceramic mugs tend to break and you might put it in your bag, you might fall on it or it might get tossed somewhere and it might break. So, and same thing with glass. These can get dented and dinged up and they'll just look better afterwards. Um, so uh, Walmart actually sells these mugs. They're really kind of cool. And uh, this was, hold on, let me check my receipt here, $6.88. And that's not a bad deal. And it looks pretty decorum, cool authentic, as the word goes, as the kids on the streets. Um, and uh, speaking of drinking, so after a battle, after a night of drinking, um, you need electrolytes. You need to replenish a lot of those electrolytes like magnesium, potassium, sodium, and Pedialyte is it. Now this is a generic brand of pediatric electrolyte oral solution, but this is great. Post battle, you're sweating, you're, um, you're low on fluids. This will help with recovery. Give it an hour or two and you'll feel a little bit better and your recovery will um, improve significantly. And Get a couple of these because everybody else is going to want it too because most people don't bring Pedialyte. Um, oh, so the, the difference between a drinking horn and a mug by visual representation. If I have liquids in this, I can set it down. If I have liquids in this, I have to finish it before I set it down because otherwise it's going to spill all over the place. There are uh, little special stands for these things, but that's another expense and you don't necessarily have to. And these might run 20 bucks on you for just a wax liner on the inside of the horn. They look cool, but for your first event, you don't necessarily have to have a horn. 
something to think about. Um, so footwear. Um, so these are my decorum shoes and your LARP is going to require different standards for your footwear. But I always recommend putting an insole in it. No matter what, make sure you have insoles. This is gonna protect your feet a lot. Um, and after a long day and you just wanna chill at camp, have some sandals. And you can just switch out of your sandals and then you know you can just chill at camp or if you want to sometimes there's rivers where you can just jump in or lakes where you can just jump in and these are great you can walk around and uh if there's sharp rocks in the lake or creek or whatever these will help protect your feet and you're still in decorum i think these run me about 20 dollars on etsy just little rope sandals um, if you're not used to running around hiking all day long and all night long sometimes still two or three in the morning moleskin i've heard a lot of people swear by it i'm used to being on my feet all day i'm used to walking all day i'm used to running for miles so i don't necessarily need to have this but i've heard a lot of people who are marathon runners who swear by this stuff uh, so yeah this cost me i think just a few dollars and that you know when you have say a rough spot or a, uh, a spot that's rubbed raw you put this stuff on it and uh, it'll help kind of protect it keep it from getting worse so make sure you grab this and there's going to be people around you that aren't going to uh, have this stuff so having extra for friends that's not a bad idea which segues into more footwear so you're going to have people tell you socks 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 right always bring socks if you think you have enough socks you don't bring more socks 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 that's just not great advice cotton socks kill your feet they just do they retain moisture they tend to compress and become rough and they rub your feet wrong and uh, i find that they're not helpful and uh, a lot of people will just switch out of those cotton socks throughout the day and they just have to pack a ton of them to go to a single event so i recommend wool socks now wool socks um wick moisture away from your feet keeping them dry and comfortable and they're softer you notice the size difference between these and the cotton ones is that there's more material to cushion your foot as you walk as you shift your weight side to side when you're fighting or when you're just hiking um, wool wool is the best now try and go for merino wool 100% wool is a bit rough merino wool is a much softer and much easier on your feet also wool self cleans so you could technically wear a whole one pair of socks for a weekend event. You just have to take them off at the end of the night, turn them inside out and let them hang out to dry and then you're good to go. I would recommend just once a day um, or just having an extra pair, just having three pairs is more than enough for what you're gonna need. Um, if one gets really soiled or really wet, you can swap out to another pair and you can wear that pair for a day or two and you can switch out to another pair. So wool socks, always get wool socks. I highly recommend it. This is one of the most essential things that you should be having in your kit. Um, to go along with recovery, you're gonna get bumps, bruises, scrapes. You're gonna get sore muscles. Your feet are gonna ache, your joints are gonna ache. Ibuprofen, make sure you have this. This is fighter candy in the SCA. This is really, really helpful to help you enjoy your event a bit more. And then if you're drinking at night, this will help take care of hangovers and any kind of inflammation that you have from the day before. Ibuprofen, kind of a no-brainer. Thought I'd include it just in case. Bags, 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 bags. So this is a satchel and I highly recommend bringing a bag with you. And this backpack. Now I carry all sorts of gear in it. And uh, this is what I normally walk around town with, go to camp to camp, because I can put snacks, I can put my Pedialyte in there, and I can uh, bring that to the battlefield. And after the fight, I can fill up my drink mug, and, uh, or I can put my gallon jug in there and still keep everything hidden. And same thing with a backpack. Uh, I use my backpack sometimes to carry my helmet. It's much more comfortable than wearing it to the battlefield or just wearing it to a fight. 
and I just, when I get to the fight, I can just put on my helmet and leave the bag somewhere with my Pedialyte, my water, and trail mix, and whatever else I need to snack on post-battle or post-adventure um, quest mod, what have you. So this I got at Hobby Lobby for, I think, $10, and it's super authentic, or cool authentic. It's pretty secure. I've loaded this thing up quite a bit, and it's pretty tough. And uh, I think you can definitely use this in any genre, post-apocalyptic, medieval fantasy, generally any LARP you can go to, you can use this, and it's pretty helpful. Um, and same thing with this satchel. Um, you can load this up, and uh, this is Bergschneider. I'm not sure what it costs now. Um, I got this as a uh, prize from uh, Damerong. Uh, when we were looting bodies, this was one of the things you can loot and take with you, take home with you. And uh, yeah, so um, other thing, when you have kit items, when you're, whenever you're worrying about garb and clothing and whatnot, I recommend two changes of clothing. Two changes. One for day fighting and one for evening for chilling out and, uh, and what have you. That's I think is really helpful for when say one gets really really soiled and wet from sweat or from rain or from snow or whatever. It's nice to change into a nice clean pair of garb. Now that's generally I think for every two days you should have another pair of clothing or garb. Headwear. So it depends on what time of year, clearly, but you need to protect your head. So there are LARPs that I've been to where I've been outside in the open sun for hours on end, and a nice straw hat is light, it breathes well, and it keeps the sun off your head, and it keeps you from getting sunburned and ruining a whole event. Uh, and again, I got this at Michael's for, I think it was on sale for clearance because it's fall as you can tell and this was like five dollars or something like that and I think they're normally like $7.99 or something like that you can definitely go online and find one on Amazon for next to nothing and you can definitely find some for way more than what they're worth for what you need them for this is also cross genre um, Vikings have been known to have straw hats medieval people this is um, cross-cultural you can go to Asian countries Russian African, they all had straw hats. Um, Caribbean islands had grass hats. So something to think about and bring to your next um, hot weather, you know, uh, sunny day kind of LARPs. Um, and if it's winter, get yourself a little hat, like a beanie or a fur hat, like this one, to keep your head warm and to keep the snow or rain off of your head and to keep you healthy and protected. Whew, long list. I'm getting close to the end though, okay? Um, oh, flashlight, okay? Flashlights are really, really helpful because you might find yourself in the dark, lost, and you don't know where you are. It's good to just bring a little flashlight that, like this in your bag and you just bring it out and like, hey, where am I? Who is that in the woods? Um, protection. This is kind of also protection. You, uh, you want to know what's out there. I've been to LARPs where coyotes were out there and they didn't know because they didn't have a flashlight on them. And uh, it was a smaller gal and she didn't have a weapon, a real weapon, and she didn't have a uh, flashlight to know what's out there or to scare them off. So bring a flashlight. Um, the other thing, it can get cold at night, some of these LARPs. Uh, so bring some thermals. These are sub-zero military thermals that I've brought with me from my military time. These are really, really useful. Um, so I've been to LARPs where it gets, you know, down to 35 at night and sometimes lower. I'm gonna be going to a LARP in March in Pennsylvania and it's gonna get below zero. So that's gonna be nice to walk around with during the day and at night if it gets really, really cold thermals. So pack those away. Even if it's the middle of summer, you might find yourself a bit cold at night. I think uh, this last Bicoline, it dipped down to about 45 degrees and it was not comfortable. So I switched out into some thermals. Slept better at night. 
and uh, getting close to the end here. Okay, bedding. And again, back to wool. Wool is so useful and it's not just for bedding. I can use this as a cloak during cold weather or rainy weather. I can just wrap this around myself over the shoulder and I got a nice little kit item that I can also use for sleeping in and it just ties a whole LARP kit together. So, and this again could use, be, be used for post-apocalyptic. So wool blankets over regular blankets because if you also notice, the, this is three wool blankets, three wool blankets. And this will definitely keep me warm at night. Something to use uh, for a cloak, for somebody else who uses a cloak. It's gonna take up much less space in your car or your luggage. So use wool blankets, completely necessary. Now I got, I got this one off of Amazon. I got this one off of a, a military surplus store. And I can't remember what I, I think I paid close to $20 for this one. This is a nice thick heavyweight. And this one's a bit lighter. And uh, I'll use all three uh, for my bed. And uh, I highly recommend wool blankets to sleep on. They're also decorum bedding. So most people will bring like Hello Kitty comforters and duvets and things like that. And you know, it's kind of silly. People are comfortable with it. That's fine. Whatever's in your tent, your cabin, that's not considered in game. And so most people don't, but I always try and keep as decorum as possible. And this is one thing that helps a lot. So last thing on the list, the last thing we finally made it is a chair, All right? And this is an X chair, a Viking chair. Um, also, some people call them um, African chairs because that's where the original design came from. So, why a chair? Why, why, why a chair? Why it's such a big thing. The reason why is most places that you go to don't have really good seating or they'll run out of seating. It's good to bring your own, right? and bring something that's really comfortable for your back to rest your feet because you don't want to be on your feet all the time. And the seating that you do go to some of these, it's usually like a bench that you're sitting at, like a picnic bench where they don't have very good back support. And you're kind of slumped over onto a picnic table and your back doesn't get the support and rest that it needs. And a lot of us have back problems. I actually make these and it's on my Etsy store and you can order one online. Also, if you see me at an event, I'll probably have one of these for sale. I'm selling these for $60 and uh, I highly recommend them. They're really, really strong. I don't care how heavy you think you are, this will support you. You can park a tank on these things. I've had friends that are close to 400 pounds with fully armored, fully um, you know, hydrated and fed and they have their, old, their whole kit and their armor and their weapons with them. And they sat on these and didn't budge, didn't crack, didn't do anything like that. And uh, I would highly recommend getting one of these chairs. And I also recommend that you get it from me. And uh, so yeah, that's basically it. That's my first LARP items that you probably should bring with you and or for experienced LARPers. You should probably bring these with you. These are really nice items. I always carry these particular items and it doesn't take up that much space in a car. And uh, if you are carpooling, it's more space for them to carry their kid items. So you don't have as much like a million socks to take with you or bedding that takes up half the car. That's all I got for you. And I'm gonna have to send you off with a be humble, be helpful and be honorable. Thank you. <laughs>